Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. Thank you so much for tuning in to another little video. This one, an instructional video for you to get more out of the Poker Tracker 4 statistics report here. So you can see we're on the statistics tab looking at my entire month so far. But I want to focus today on this bottom hands uh, section of the report. So if you take a look at this right now, and actually I recommend that you open up Poker Tracker 4 if you're able to while you're watching this maybe on your home computer. Open it up and see how your report potentially differs from mine because this is not the default report. I've made lots of changes to it through the years in order to make it easier for me to dive through my own hands and the hands of my students. So from left to right, these are all the different columns that I have uh, tagged or marked hands. The side I play on, date, stay, currency, one hole cards, facing pre-flop action, pre-flop action that I actually took, uh, flop, turn, river actions, the entire board right here, final hand, the winning hand if it differs from my final hand, right? And then of course the winner's name right over here. So like I said, your report, if you've never configured it, probably looks different from mine. What you're gonna do is hit right click and then uh, configure report. And then from top to bottom is the same here as left to right. Actually, let me scroll this down so you can see marked side, side icon date, marked side icon date. You can move things up and down as you see fit. If there's a statistic here that you don't like, like, oh, I don't want to see my whole cards. I don't need that. You do need it, right? But if you want to get rid of anything that's in the default report, just double click it and it you can envision it like it's moving it from here back over here but we actually do want to see whole cards right so if if you were missing it and you wanted to add it just type in one specific word from it whole cards is what we want double click it and it put it right here after the thing that was highlighted i actually want it up so you can see my currency one then the whole cards hit okay if you ever want to see the default you can click on that go back to it but hit okay once it refreshes, uh, well, it's gonna be the exact same report, right? And now I wanna go through some things that I find really useful about the configuration that I have in this report. First off are the marked or the tagged hands. I can select this, uh, or I guess filter, not filter, sort it by the mark just by clicking that header. And then here's the marked hand. There's probably some other positions where I have lots of marked hands, three in the cutoff, in the MP, I've got two right there, right? So I can just take a look, quickly find those marked hands. The site, if I wanna review all my winning poker network or my carbon or merge network right there, the date, so I know when it played, right? Sometimes you're looking at your month, your entire year, the lifetime stats. It's good to know when you played specific hands. The stake, well, this is good for me because I play at different table types. So you can see I play six max, I also play full ring 10 and L. I play fast games right here. I don't see any, this month I haven't been playing too much 25 NL, but you see occasional 25 NL games in. So that's important to know. My currency one, if you sort it by this, at the top of the page, we can see all of our different hands that we've won in descending order. Click that again. You can see the biggest losses right here. Ooh, pocket kings losing 43 big blinds. No fun, right? So I could take a look at this hand. Oh, kings, I lost money. Double click it and then start reviewing the hand as necessary to learn from any mistakes I might've made or find my mistakes. The next column is facing preflop action. I, I really like this because you can see I was facing a three bet cold. Oh, I just folded pocket sevens, of course. But if I wanted to see why did I fold pocket sevens? What if this hand was like pocket tens or pocket jacks? Facing a three bet cold, it might be a decent opportunity to come in and, um, oh, look at it. Oh, tiny little cold three bet. I could have uh, made a four bet here. I could have called with the sevens to set mine with pretty decent odds right here because he only made it 5.8 big blinds, right? If I had pocket tens or jacks, probably a good spot to be four betting or at least at a minimum calling, right? So you can go through looking at pre-flop action. You can see all the different times when, let's see here, two limpers, fold, fold, fold. Yeah, none of those are really good hands, but against this limper, I raised on this one. Take a look at all the hands where I'm facing a limper, that kind of thing. Now, one of the things I like seeing street by street action is where you can take a look, take a look at your line throughout the hand. So let's sort of here just by flop action. All right, so if I wanna see all the flops where I bet, whether it was a donk bet, a continuation bet, a limped pot, and I just bet in the big blind, whatever it might be, I can take a look at all my bets. But look at this, check calling on the turn, what's going on here? Let's sort it by turn action. We can see I can look at these two turn check calling hands. 
you know, I check, I bet, and then I called on that flop with an over pair of kings, and then I check called. What am I scared of? What's going on? That's when, and you can see I tagged the hand for review as well. I can open up the hand and, and take a look at it. I'm check folding on that river right here. Oh, I don't like that play without having reviewed the hand, right? By just looking at my action throughout the hand. Maybe I don't like it. It's definitely a, a hand worth reviewing and seeing what we can figure out from this hand, finding mistakes, finding better ways to play, looking at my opponent, seeing what they're doing, all that kind of stuff. Now, the flop turn in river is nice because I can sort it by flops and I could take a look, oh, all these ace high flops, how am I playing them? How are my opponents playing them? So even though I folded, there's two limpers in this hand right here. Even though I folded, it's a flop that comes with an ace. I can see how my opponents play on an ace high flop in a limped pot right here. Oh, but Andy took it down, of course. But look at that, 54-8 player limping in pre-flop, betting over pot with an on an ace high board. He's got an ace almost for sure being such a loose passive player right so i like sorting it by that i don't generally sort it by turn and river but i always like to see those cards it gives me kind of a clear idea okay ace king hit the ace on the river why did i just check maybe i should just bet oh it's a tagged hand worth reviewing right now over here the final hand is my final hand and so a hand will only populate here if you get to showdown with it. That's the final hand after all the board cards are out there. If you folded preflop, it doesn't matter if you raised and then folded. Um, yeah, I don't have a final hand because we didn't get to showdown. The winning hand is over here with the winning player's name as well. I don't generally look at these too much. All of my attention is normally focused on this area as I'm going through my own database, trying to find my mistakes, and then going through my students' databases, trying to find and help them with their mistakes as well. So I highly recommend that if you have not configured this bottom portion yet, go ahead and follow my configuration exactly. Start reviewing hands, sorting it by the different headers, seeing what you can learn about the way you play and finding mistakes that you made so you can start plugging those leaks. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up directly down below and then subscribe to the channel as well. I'll catch you in the next one.